Good morning, everybody. How many of you want to be blessed? How many of you want to be very blessed? In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 27 and Deuteronomy chapter 28, we read about what the Bible calls the blessings and the curses. Now, one thing we have to understand is both blessing and curse are a reality. They are real. It is as real as the chair that you are sitting on at this point in time. And when you look at certain people's lives, even uneducated people, people that don't even know the Bible, will often say, oh, that one is very blessed. Or they will say, oh, that one is obviously cursed. What do we mean by that? It means that when we look at the life of an individual, the person that we deem to be blessed, we can see that everything just seems to work for them. It's like there's something supernatural in their life that seems to be working for them and working with them. And when you refer to somebody's life as being cursed, it's because they, they tend to live according to Murphy's Law. You know how that works, right? Anything that can go wrong, obviously will go wrong. Amen. Even their problems have problems. That's just the way it is. So in Deuteronomy chapter 27 and Deuteronomy chapter 28, after God brought the Israelites out of Egypt and they wandered in the desert for 40 years, God led them to two mountains. One was called Mount Gerizim, which was where God gave the blessing. And the other one was called Mount Ebal, where God gave the curses. There Moses was... Uh, spoken to by God to command six leaders from six tribes to stand on Mount Gerizim and to pronounce God's blessings. And he was told to say to them, these blessings, uh, Paulo, please uh, just take it down a little bit. It's just too loud. He was commanded to say to them that these blessings will come about because of your obedience. Do you hear that? That is a very important word. You see, here's the thing. Everybody wants to be blessed. I I don't think anybody in their right mind will say, oh, you know what? I'm fine with the curses that I have in my life. No, everybody wants to be blessed. But the blessing isn't just suddenly there. The blessing is available to everybody. But something in your life channels the blessing into your life where it is necessary. Amen? Amen. You know, the airwaves yeah, are full of information, but something must channel it to your phone so that somebody can speak to you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? The blessing of God is the same. Everywhere around us, the blessing of God is. But the blessing of God only touches certain people because that component which is necessary to make it work in your life is very difficult to come by. It's called obedience. And the problem is mankind tends to find it much easier to be disobedient than what we do to be obedient. The other six leaders had to stand on Mount Ebal and pronounce the curses that God said would follow because of disobedience. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. Today I want to talk to you about the blessings. I'm not going to focus on the curse. Today I want to speak to you about the blessing because everybody here wants to be blessed. And I want to show you what God wants to see in your life for blessing to come. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. If you, look at your neighbor and say God's talking to you. Ah, If you fully obey the Lord your God. And if you carefully follow all his commands that I give you today. Then the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. How do you get out of your problems? God has to set you high above them. Amen. Amen. How do you get out of the pit that you might be in right now? God has to set you high above that pit. The blessing of God makes you stand out in the crowd. You know, today, that's just the way life is. When we want to stand out, we get ourselves a weird, quirky hairstyle. We wear funny shoes and we, we wear all, you know, weird clothing and then we, like we're standing out. But that does nothing for your life. God can, I don't want to make it sound funny, but He can sprinkle you with something supernatural, which is, which is going to cause your life 
to stand out above the crowd. And that's where you really want to be because when your life gets to that point, you begin to go forward. You experience God's blessing. The blessing of God makes you stand out in the crowd. It brings you godly favor. It elevates you above the others around. <coughs> I think everybody that is here today can say, wow, I would love to live my life in that place. And listen to me, it's not about being better than somebody else. It's being the best you can be. Amen. Amen. Because we're all different. My destiny is not your destiny. My purpose is not your purpose. But I need to be the best I can be with what God has placed inside of me. And if everybody else is down in the pit, that doesn't mean that I need to stay there. God says in His Word, I can come out from there and I can be elevated. It may be true that God does not have favorites. But one thing is clear. Some people, according to the Bible, will always be elevated above other people. Now, if God is the one that brings about the elevation, we also can't complain about that. But maybe we should realize that there is a reason why that individual has been elevated by God. God might not have favorites, but God has certain people in His kingdom that understand His principles better than others, apply them better, and therefore their lives go forward much easier. One thing that we should all take heed of is that even though all the blessings of God are available to every child of God, there is a very important word. They are conditional. Okay? They are conditional. The world is full of Christians that get upset because the Bible says this and this and I don't have it and now I'm upset and now I don't go to church anymore. But that's wrong. Because you've got to read the Word of God in its entirety. And even though all these things are available to every single one of us, a lot of us never seem to come to the place that we meet the conditions. And because you do not meet the conditions, you cannot have what the Bible says is available to you. You do not have the blessings of God just through relationship status with God. Amen. The fact that you are in a relationship with God does not um, supernaturally endow you with the blessings of God. It allows you to begin to live the life that God wants to see that will eventually bring you to the place of experiencing the blessing. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 3 he says you will be blessed in the city and you will be blessed in the country now here's an interesting thought no matter where you go God's word says when you begin to live your life in a way that my blessing comes upon you it doesn't matter where you go you can be blessed in Gauteng you can be blessed in Bloemfontein you can be blessed in Father. You can be blessed in Pitson of Water. You can be blessed in Portugal. You can be blessed in Spain. You can be blessed in the Ukraine. Can you believe it? <laughs> Anywhere that you can think of, God says, if you live the right life, and if you begin to meet my conditions, you will be blessed in the city and in the country. No matter where you go, I will bless you. You see, the blessing of God is something supernatural. It's not coupled, listen to me, it's not coupled to the inflation rate. It's not coupled to the gold price. It's got nothing to do with recession. It is not even subject to corrupt government. When the blessing of God is upon your life, something about your life is going to be different. Amen? Amen? The blessing of God works for you behind the scenes. It brings forth prosperity. It brings forth favor. It brings forth healing and victory. It brings forth abundance and goodness. And a whole bunch of other things. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 4 says, The fruit of your womb will be blessed. And the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks 
will be blessed. How many parents in this place today? Mr. Lee? No. You're going to be a parent one day. No. Don't stress. Oh, oh his mother-in-law just then they had a panic attack. <laughs> I might be prophesying, but let's just say nothing. <laughs> the fact is, any good parent wants the best for their children. Do you agree with me? I mean, a lot of us, we work hard because we want to give a better life to our children than sometimes we had growing up. We work hard to give them a good life and we want to give them every opportunity that they need to prosper in life. Yet, without God's blessing. You can go above and beyond the call of duty and do everything you want for your children to be blessed, but you might find that they are still not blessed. You see, you need the blessing of God to truly live a blessed life. There's a lot of good people in this world, but they might not have the blessing of God. There's a lot of people that we might think are not so nice, but they have the blessing of God. You see, the blessing of God is something supernatural. It's something that maybe your eyes can't see, but you can see the effect thereof in the life of an individual. I want you to see something. The way you live your life will directly influence your children's future. Why is that important? Because, you know, we work hard to leave a legacy. We want our children one day when we're not here, they must have enough to sustain them. Or they must have a good solid foundation, etc., etc. Probably all of you here, yeah, you've got some policies with Old Mutual and Sanlam and this and that now. The problem is if your children are not under the blessing of God, the only thing that's going to happen is easy come, easy go. Because the world is full of people that have inherited large sums of money that their parents toiled and worked their whole life for. And in a twinkling of an eye, it's gone. And there's nothing to show for it. Why? Because it's not blessed. You want your children to be blessed. If your children are blessed, they're going to go forward. If your children are blessed, their life will amount to something. If your children are blessed, they can't obviously be cursed. And if they are not cursed, finances is not going to be like this bottomless pit. There's going to be something to sustain them. We need to get to that place. They may, sorry, there are also many who leave their children. I spoke about that already. The best investment you can make for your children is to live an obedient life, honoring God's word and honoring God's principles. Why? Because then the blessing of God comes upon you. But through you, the blessing of God also filters down to your children. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible does say, I will curse those who bow to false gods, etc. Till the third and the fourth generation. But then he goes on and he says, but I will bless those who love me to a thousand generations. Amen. It is not just a curse that can jump from one generation to the next generation. The blessing of God can jump a thousand generations. What I'm trying to show you is the blessing is infinitely more powerful than the curse. No, we shouldn't give the curse a place in our life. But we really have to work hard to get to the place of the blessing. Because when the blessing of God is upon somebody's life, their life will manifest the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Things will be different. Let's talk about prosperity. The following verses that I'm going to read to you now, Deuteronomy 28 verse 4 to 5, indicate that God's blessings are not only spiritual, but physical as well. You know, a lot of people, when they think about these things, their take on it is, oh, obviously God is meaning these things in a spiritual sense. You know, spiritually I'm going to be blessed. I will have dreams and I will have visions and God will speak to me and now and then God will give me a sign or He will give me direction. It includes these things, but it is not only these things. Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 4. The crops of your land 
and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your netting trowel will be blessed. What's spiritual about that? Only the blessing. But the manifestation thereof is purely physical. Now, you see, this was written in a time where there were no mechanics. There were no doctors. There were no secretaries. Most of the jobs that we have today did not exist back then. But this is what they did to sustain themselves. They worked in the fields. Somebody baked bread and sold it. Now look at what he says. The crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, the lambs of your flocks, the basket and your netting trowel will be blessed. In other words, what you do for a living, I, God says, will divinely, supernaturally bless it. How's that not physical? Now today, we do still have farmers. But it's not just the farmer that can claim the blessing because today we have other jobs. Today we're involved in other things. But what God is trying to say is, I will bless what you do. And the blessing will be physical. You will reap the rewards of your hard work and I will increase it exponentially. Amen. Amen. So these verses speak of prosperity. If your herds... Okay, looking at it from a biblical time. Let's say you had a herd of 50 cattle. And the blessing of God is upon it. And they keep multiplying, keep multiplying, keep multiplying. And let's say after 10 years, you have 10,000 cattle. Would you say that you have prospered? For sure, you have prospered. These verses speak of prosperity. They speak of financial and material prosperity. Because back in the day, families made a living from working in the land or working with cattle. Okay, That's how you, you made your money. And what you used to do is you had to have cattle and you had to have fields to feed yourself. But whatever you had left over, you could then use to go and barter for whatever else you needed. You know, somebody made soap. You would say to them, okay, I'll give you one lamb. You give me 10 kilograms of soap. And another person made blankets and you will say, okay, I'll give you 20 kilograms of mealies and then you give me three blankets. That's how people survived. But if the work of your hands was not blessed, you had nothing to barter with. You had nothing to negotiate with, which means you literally had nothing so it was crucial that the work of your hands had to give a good return otherwise you were gonna go hungry and you probably had no means to sustain your family for the other necessities that life has you see the blessing of God will manifest itself in the field where you work and give you a good living now, the field that you are working in today is wherever you are earning your income. Some of you work for a corporate company, that's the field where you are working. Some of you work for small business, that's the field where you are working. Some of you work for yourself, that is the field where you are working. Some of you work for the government, I will pray for you, but that is the field where you are working. <laughs> So for some of you, it's a teacher. Some of you, it's a businessman. You could be a mechanic. You could be a nurse, whatever the case might be. I want you to notice that your basket will be blessed. In other words, God is saying to us, whatever you have to put in your basket that you take home, that you say, this is for me and my family, it's going to be filled to overflowing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Under God's blessing, have you ever heard... Um, people will sometimes say, oh, you know, things are very tough. I'm living under the bread line. Have you heard that? Yes. I, I get an Afrikaans said he owns by ons lief onder die brood line. Okay. So in other words, there's this invisible line called the bread line. And depending on how you do, you either live under it or you live over it. Now you see, here's the thing. When God's blessing is upon your life, you're never going to live under that bread line. In fact, you're not even going to live over the bread line. God is going to make sure that you live in the bakery. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
There where the bread is created, where every day it's new, every day it's fresh, and there is abundance. You know, our church is on top of a bakery. If your life is in the bakery, you will never have lack. Amen. You will have more than enough. Lack will not be your lifestyle. God says abundance will be your lifestyle. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 8 says, The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. Look at your hands. Look at them quickly. Isn't that what you use to provide for yourself? Whatever work you do, your hands play a very big role. Okay, look at your hands again. The Lord will send a blessing upon your bonds and on everything you put those hands to. In other words, your hands, whatever they touch, God says, if you are truly blessed of me, everything you touch will work for you. Everything you put your hands to is going to manifest the blessing of God. In other words, you will be prosperous in everything that you do. And when people talk about you, they're going to say, man, that Tony has blessed hands. Wow, Eddie, everything he puts his hands to always works for him. What is it about him that makes him so different? It's that supernatural component that people cannot explain. But they can see the effect thereof. It's called the blessing of God. You see, here's the unfortunate reality. There are people in this world that work very, very, very hard. They slave from morning till night. But their hands are obviously not that blessed because when you look at their life, it is not testifying of prosperity. They work like a dog, but they're still under the bread line. If that person can come to a place that they enter the blessing of God with the amount of work they do, they will be millionaires. Do you understand the difference? Life is full of people that really do work hard. But when they look back, they still have nothing to show for it. That is not the blessing. But you can get to the blessing. Because God says, when you live your life under my blessing... I will bless everything you put your hands to. The difference between these two people are simply one's hands are blessed, the other one's hands are not. It doesn't help we get jealous of the person whose hands are actually blessed because the blessing is coming from God. Do you understand what I'm saying? But... What we can do is begin to ask the question, what is it that they are doing that allows the blessing of God to be channeled through them? And I want to say to you, look at their lifestyle. Their lifestyle will reflect that of an individual who is in obedience to God. It is a person that put God first. It is the person that when things are not right... And God speaks to them about their life. They are willing to lay their pride down and change. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time for change. I want to say something to you. You cannot enter the blessing of God if you are not willing to change. Because all of us have something about our life that moves us out from under obedience to God. A couple of weeks ago, I spoke to you about the tongue. And you know what? A lot of people came to me and said to me afterwards, wow, it felt like you were speaking just to me. I realize how wrong I have been. Now, here's the thing. If it takes obedience for God's blessing to be upon your life and your tongue is moving you into the realm of disobedience, how blessed can you be? You're not going to be blessed. So there's things that you have to change. Sometimes it's our thought life. You know, our thoughts can be very negative. In fact, our thoughts can be very destructive. And the Bible says we must take captive our thoughts and make them obedient unto Christ. Which means that we have to change the way that we think. Amen. I can give you a thousand examples, but the fact is there could be a lot of places in your life where right now, even though you work hard, 
And even though you do good in certain areas, because in other areas you are not obedient, the blessing is absent from your life. How do we change that? We need to become obedient. Because it is obedience that brings the blessing of God into your life. And I want to say something to you. If it is possible for her to be obedient, it's, imp- it's possible for all of us to be obedient. Amen? It's not the most difficult thing in the world, but it does cost you a price. You see, the thing with the human flesh, it likes to do the things that gratify the flesh, not the things that please God. And that means that sometimes you have to turn your back on certain things. It means that things that before was okay for you to do, now you realize, you know, the Word of God says, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do that, I shouldn't do that. I've said to you before, when you follow a cake recipe, it's not just the things that you have to do, it's the things that you shouldn't do as well that means the cake will be successful or not. I'll give you a stupid example. You follow the recipe, you're doing everything right, but you open the the, the oven to check whether the thing is okay and then it collapses. There's things you shouldn't do. Like when when the recipe says you first, you know, mix the egg whites on their own and then you have to fold them in. It also means don't just mix everything together and think it's going to work. A lot of people follow the recipe like that. Okay, I've got this and that and that. Hoy it all together. And then it's like, it's as hard as a rock. You give it to your husband and he breaks his teeth. (laughs) And you can't understand why he's not happy. Because there are certain don'ts to making things work and certain do's. And we need to honor both sides if we really want to be blessed. Deuteronomy 28 verse 11 says, The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. How's that for a big word? God's word says, in the right conditions, your life is going to be manifesting abundant prosperity. Why would it be good for us to live our life in a place where we can live in abundant prosperity? Because if you have abundance, you have more than enough. If you have more than enough, you can share with others. You can lighten the burden in another person's life. Now, Did you hear that? Abundant prosperity. The word prosperity is defined as the condition of being successful or thriving, especially in economic well-being. In other words, abundant prosperity is to be successful and to be thriving. If you have a business... You don't want to do enough business to just, just, just pay your electrical bill. Okay? God says, under my blessing, not only will you have the money to pay the electrical bill, you will have money to go to pick and pay and put four trolleys full. You will have enough for your car's tank to be full the whole month. And so it goes on and on. And by the time you've done all of that, you're still going to have quite a lot spare in the bank account. I don't know about you, but I think that's where everybody wants to live their life. And it's available, but it's going to ask of you to make changes in the way you do things. It's going to ask of you to ask the question, is what I'm doing, is what I'm saying, is the way I'm acting, honoring God, am I being an obedient child of God? Yes or no? If your answer is no, but I don't care, you will never be blessed. If your answer is yes, and I'm going to keep doing it, You are on the right track to be blessed. Abundant prosperity is knocking on the door of every individual in this church today. And God is saying to you, are you willing to do what it takes to go through that door? Will you open the door to abundant prosperity? The next time, I want to say something to you. People go to church every Sunday. And people hear what they will sometimes term as, oh, we had a nice sermon today. The sermon is not being preached to make you feel good. The sermon is being preached to teach you what you should and shouldn't do. If you walk out of the church and you do not comply to the word that was preached, you cannot expect the blessing of God upon your life. Because many times in a sermon, God will touch on areas of your life where you are obviously not in the right place. 
It is your responsibility to make the changes to bring yourself in line with the word of God. It's nice to sit and listen to a sermon and think, oh, that's interesting. Mm, that's nice. But we leave and we never apply what we learned. You can't be blessed that way. The purpose of teaching is to instruct. The purpose of teaching is to give direction. And sometimes through the teaching, we can realize, oh, you know what? I'm going this way where God wants me to go that way. If we don't then say, oh, it's time for change. How can we expect God to bless us? Do you know what the word repentance means? I'm going to show you. The word repentance, if, I, if I, I might be crucifying the word now by the way I say it, but if I understand correctly, it's a word called metanoia or metamorpho, something like that. And it, it, it implies a metamorphosis, which is when a, a, a bug turns into a, 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 um, a what? Butterfly. A butterfly. Thank you. It's a complete change. And it implies the fact that you were on your way on this direction. God speaks to you. You're listening. He's telling you you're on the wrong path. Things need to change. Instead of like, whatever, it's like, oh, I change. I move in another direction. Repentance means change. And I want to say something to you. There is one thing that God is always going to expect of us in the kingdom of God. It's called change. Because Jesus said, lest you repent, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. God expects us to allow change to come. And you know what? For most of you, that's going to be a fight, a battle in itself. Because your flesh doesn't want to change. Your flesh likes what it's doing. And that's where you have to trust God that in the power of the Spirit of God, your spirit is going to rise up and say, I don't care. It's time for change. I want to live a better life. I want to live a decent life. I want to honor God. I want to do what's right in His eyes. You see, we can say things like that and then we're with a group of friends and they all want to do the wrong thing. And it's like, oh, but I want to be one of the guys. Sometimes it also implies that certain friends are going to have to go. Especially if they are the type of friends that's always going to pull you down into the pit. You know, a lot of people have this attitude. I'm going to go down into the pit with them because when I'm down in the pit with them, I can help them to come back up. I want to tell you something. Once you're down in the pit with them, nobody's going to help you to come back up. I know I've shown this before, but let me just show it again. Tony, come stand here on this chair for me, please. Okay. Oh, don't break the chair. He's up there. I'm down here. A lot of people have this attitude. It's like, uh, it's not that bad to go down there and to mingle with the people down there. Everything is okay. But I want to show you something. Pull me up. Pull, 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 pull. You're not trying hard enough. Okay, he can't pull me up. But let me show you something. It's nothing to pull him down. Remember that. It's nothing to be pulled down. And sometimes when you're dealing with people that like to be down in the pit, you've got to turn around and walk away. Because the more you try and help them up, the more they're actually just pulling you down. Do you know why the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers? Because people that yoke with unbelievers, that join with unbelievers, that go into contracts and stuff with unbelievers, they've always got this thing, ah, I'm going to help them. They're going to help you. How many ladies, how many girls in this world have married an unbeliever? Telling their family, oh, don't worry, within the first six months, I'm going to have him in church. Within the first six months, you're going to stop going to church because you're not going to change him. If he doesn't choose to change in his heart, he will never change. You can't change another person. The person chooses to change for themselves. God helps you out of your drug habit. But then you want to go and sit with all the druggies and your thing is like, oh, I'm just going to preach to them and I'm going to show them what kind of a life God can give us. Within the first couple of weeks, you're going to take a puff of something stupid and you're going to go down. Do you understand? When we come into the kingdom of God, there are places we're not supposed to go anymore. There's things God says, turn away from it. I don't want you exposed to that stuff. Amen. Amen. So, being prosperous means to 
be successful, then let's think about what does abundant prosperity mean? You see, here's what I want you to understand. Abundant prosperity is not a myth. It's a biblical fact. Those words actually come from the Bible. Abundant prosperity is not reserved for a select few. Abundant prosperity is there for every one of us. Even in the New Testament, in John 10.10, 10, we are told that Jesus came to provide for us abundant life. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 12 says, The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of His bounty, and He will send rain on your land in season and bless again all the work of your hands. Deuteronomy, 20, Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. Here's one of the most important concepts that you have to grasp today. When your life comes under the blessing of God, and when prosperity begins to manifest itself, and it touches everything that you put your hands to, the source of that prosperity is not what is around you. The source of that prosperity is the storehouse of God. Amen. You know, a lot of people will say, ah, oh, it's impossible. You know what? Look at the recession. Look at the interest rate. Look at the crime. Look at the corruption. You're looking. Yeah, God says, look there. Because abundant prosperity doesn't come from the area where you are. It doesn't come from the company that you're working for. It doesn't come from your boss, whether he likes you or not. It comes from the boss. It comes from God. Amen. I'm going to read you that again. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of His bounty. To send rain upon your land in season and to bless the work of your hands. Where does your abundant prosperity come from? Look at your neighbor say the storehouse of God. God's storehouse is never empty. God's storehouse doesn't know the word lack. God's storehouse is abundantly full. You need it, it's up there. That car that you need, it's up there. Amen. The new house that you need is up there. The godly wife that you're waiting for, she's up there. God will bless you with abundant prosperity. In other words, you will be prosperous in whatever you do and your hands will be known to others as being blessed. The difference is on the blessing being on the hands of some, but not being on the hands of others. I spoke to you earlier about two people. One does work fairly hard, and everything they do is just blessed, blessed, blessed. It grows, it multiplies, it explodes, it just goes forward. Then you get the other guy, he works probably even harder than the first guy. But at the end of the year, he sits and he's like, oh, I have nothing to show for it. What's the difference? It's not the hard work. Hard work is hard work, no matter how you look at it. It's whether my hands are blessed or not. You want your hands to be blessed. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong place. So it is not your boss or your company that you work for that will determine your blessings, but God's storehouse. It's not the government, a bank, your bonus check, your investments, your pension, or even what you do that will determine your blessings, but the storehouse of God. There's a lot of you here. You feel that you have to look people in the eye to bless you. You, gotta have, you don't have to look nobody in the eye. Listen, your eye of need. You look towards your provider. But you honor God with your life. You be obedient to His Word. And you show Him obedience. And can I tell you one thing? There's a scripture in the Bible that says that it is God that touches the hearts of kings. A king could just as well be your boss. 
You know, that same boss that for whatever reason doesn't like you and has said amongst other things that I won't promote so and so and so. When the favor of God comes upon your life and the blessing of God is there, he will open his mouth to say one thing and something else will come out and he'll think to himself, what the hell is going on here? But it will stand. Because when God wants something to happen, my friend, it happens. There will be a computer glitch. The next thing you know, you have a nice increase. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I want to tell you something. God has mysterious ways of working. But God does work. I have seen in my own life personally how God many, many, many times has blessed me abundantly. But I want to tell you something about my life. And the people that know me and that know me close. I want to do the right thing. That doesn't mean that now and then the wrong thing doesn't come and knock on my door. But I choose to do the right thing. I choose to honor God with my life. I am blessed. You know, a while ago, I went fishing. I went deep sea fishing. Now, just to put it into perspective, I was already sick. I had the flu. If it was up to me, I wasn't going to go fishing. But my father paid for me to go fishing. He wanted me and him to go. So now I can't say no because he's already spent a lot of money for me to go. So that morning I wake up, man, I'll tell you what, I'm as sick as a dog. I'm thinking, oh, I don't know how I'm going to survive this. Then I have the worst case of motion sickness known to man. I looked like a Martian. I was green from head to toe. I tell you what, I was like, oh God, I want to go home. Please. But can I tell you something? And this... I caught one fish after the other, after the other, <laughs> after the other. There's 10 people on the boat. I thought at one stage I was going to turn into Jonah because these oaks are going to throw me off now. Because I catch a fish, I vomit. I catch a fish, I vomit. I'm catching fish. And you know, then this one guy, he actually gets up. He says, listen, what's going on here? we 10 oaks on the boat. We're all dropping our, our lines in exactly the same place. Only this guy is catching fish. Do you know why? I'm abundantly blessed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you want to go fish out? Yeah. Amen. Amen. But you know what? I want to say something to you. It's true. When you are blessed, people will notice. Because something about your life is going to be different. Amen. Amen. And you can see it's like Doors just open that for other people are always closed. When you get this, like, it opens. I firmly believe without the blessing of God, we battle. Without the blessing of God, we experience no real success. And the world, I want to say to you again, is full of good people that go nowhere. Because even good people have a lot of areas in their life where they are not obedient to God. We need to come to a place that we take the stuff serious. And we say, you know what? I truly want to be blessed. We spoke earlier about our children. God says he will bless the fruit of your womb. In other words, he will bless your children. What good is it? You work your whole life and you have these massive policies and you leave cars and houses and, and, and holiday homes to your children just so that within the first year they squander it all because they are not blessed. First get yourself blessed. Then through you God will begin to bless your children and then there will be a godly legacy and things will go forward. Amen. Amen. Before you can begin to prosper, the Bible makes it very clear, your hands need to be blessed of God. This is important. In the spirit world, when demons look at your hands, they can see the blessing or they can see the absence of the blessing. Let's be creative. I'm not saying that's the way it really is, but let's be creative and say, if an evil spirit looks at somebody's hands, there's going to be some component on the hands that show that the work of this person is blessed. Let's, the Bible says God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Let's say there's a light shining out of your hands. 
When there's that light shining out of your hands and you touch something, that light is upon that, that thing as well. It says to the devil, hands off. Amen? Amen. But if you don't have it, there's a gap. The thief will come and steal. Jesus said, the thief came to steal and to kill and to destroy. What is of God, Satan cannot have. What is not of God, the enemy will take. Amen. Next, I want you to notice that when you come under God's blessing, you will have the abundant prosperity to lend to even nations. He says there, you will lend to many nations. How many people in this world can actually lend to nations? It's not that many. But the Bible says we can. You will lend to nations, but you yourself will never have to borrow. The next manifestation of God's blessing can be summed up in one word. It's called victory. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7 says, The Lord will grant that the enemies that rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but they will flee from you in seven. The devil will come at you from one direction. The power of God will explode and they will flee in seven. Let's first get one thing straight. Everybody has enemies. Raise your hands if you have no enemies. I'm sure I have more than I think. <laughs> That's very possible. Everyone has enemies. Listen, even Jesus had enemies. He was the son of God. He walked in integrity. He was upright. He was fair. He was just. He was anointed. But a lot of people couldn't stand him. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter how blessed you are. Enemies are always going to be around us. You see, we know better than Jesus. There's a lot of evil people in this world. They harbor bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, jealousy, envy, slander, gossip, etc., etc., even against blessed men and women of God. And you see, the devil is not stupid. He knows he can use people like that to come against you. Also, there are those who worship money, who, worship, uh, uh, who are involved in crime and corruption, etc. They touch everything around them. Sometimes we're around them. And we can also be touched. Now, here's a thought. People sometimes look at someone having a lot of enemies as if it is some sign that you're doing something wrong or you are in a wrong standing with God. But Jesus had a lot of those in his own life. The devil likes to get people to go after the righteous. The devil likes to give men and women of God a hard time because he wants to demoralize us. He wants to frustrate us. He wants us to feel hopeless and live in despair. The manifestation of God's blessing upon your life is not the total absence of enemies, but the total defeat of the ones that come. Do you hear the difference? God doesn't say, because I've blessed you, no enemy will touch you. God says, when they do come, they will run in seven directions. So God's blessing upon your life causes an anointing to come upon your life that annihilates, destroys, decimates, and scatters your enemies whenever they come against you. I want to say something. Do not come <laughs> against the righteous of God because you will get scattered. Amen. That's a promise from the Word of God. Amen. So it doesn't stop People from trying, but it turns their plans into failure. Okay, so, so much for people. We know that there's a lot of bad people in this world. Keep your eyes ahead of yourself, please, sister. <laughs> 1 Peter 5, 8. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We don't just have enemies made of flesh and bone. The devil doesn't like you either. Yes, he will use people to come against you, but sometimes spiritually he will just rise against you. Perhaps the greatest enemy that all of us face is Satan and his demons who want to destroy our lives. One of the greatest benefits of being under the blessing of God is the ability to have victory in every situation. 
You know, the devil's always busy. That I can tell you. But the devil mustn't be busy gaining victory in your life. The devil must be busy being defeated in your life. Because then you are blessed of God. Once again, I don't want you to be fooled into believing that just because you are under the blessing of God, demons will leave you alone. It's unbiblical. The devil messes with everybody. In fact, because you are now walking in God's blessing, the devil probably thinks to himself, you are a bigger threat than Pete Pompey's down the road who's not in the blessing of God. I only have 10 minutes left. Okay. The blessing of God will, however, give you the ability to scatter every demonic affliction coming into your life in seven directions. You see, this is where you want to live your life. The devil messes with everybody. Nobody, nobody is exempt from the devil's trials, tribulations, problems, destruction, whatever you want to call it. But there are some people that manage to get above it. And there are other people that are constantly beneath it. Where do you want to live your life? Doesn't the word of God say, I have given you the authority to trample on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you? Yes, it does. But then you've got to get to the place of the blessing because then you get elevated above the serpent and the scorpion and you can actually trample them. Unfortunately, some people are down there at the bottom somewhere and it is the serpent and the scorpion trampling on them. You cannot have victory if you are not blessed. The two Go hand in hand. 1 Peter 5.8 Be self-controlled and alert. For your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in your faith. The word resist is a verb. For those of you who haven't gone to school for a long time, you might have forgotten what that means. But it implies that you must take action. It implies you have to do something. When the devil comes against us, we can't sit in the corner and cry because that's not the action God wants us to take. God says, get up, fight back. I'll give you victory. Do you hear that? Get up, fight back. I will give you victory. When we are blessed of God, we have the guns to fight with. When we are not blessed of God, we got nothing to fight with. No demon gets defeated just because of God's anointing. They get defeated when we use that anointing correctly and fight them off. Here's a novel idea. Jesus walked the earth. The Bible says upon his life was the anointing without measure. The spirit of God without measure. Yet even Jesus, as anointed as he was, rebuked the demons and cast them out of people. They didn't just leave because Jesus walked into the room. Do you hear what I'm saying? But that's how a lot of people think. They think because I've entered the kingdom of God and I'm under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, these things must just disappear. It's not biblical. You have now been equipped to do something about it. The question is, are you doing something about it? You can conquer your enemies, but you can only conquer the ones you're willing to fight. Amen? You have to be willing to fight back. This is why some people never get free from the demonic entities in their lives. Because they simply do not want to fight. They expect God to do everything for them. No. God enables you to do it. He doesn't do it for you. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 9. The Lord will establish you as his holy people. As he has promised you on an oath. Um, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and if you walk in his ways then all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you once again we are warned <laughs> that God's blessing is conditional to experience it you need to be obedient to the voice of God and walk in his ways I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands or anything like that I simply want you to think how many times in your life have you been somewhere where you've heard the voice of God say this is not for you but you were like ah, 
I'll change tomorrow. I'm still young. I, 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 don't, I don't need to be like all oh, right now. You know, I'll just a bit, yeah. And then later on, I'll sort out my life. You know, the world is full of people that thought that way and then they never had the opportunity. It's best to start being obedient today. Because the benefits of obedience are great. And you know what? Looking at it from that point of view, show me one negative. You can't really. When God talks to you and you obey, He, I want to almost say, rewards you with His blessing. When God talks to you and you don't listen, God simply doesn't reward you and the blessing is absent. In your life and there's a lot of things you can't do if you're not blessed of God if you obey God promises to take care of all your needs and change your life so radically that everyone around you will notice people will say of you it's not normal to be so blessed hmm. It's not normal to be so prosperous. It's not, how do you manage to be so victorious? How can you manage to have so much favor? Whatever you go do, wherever you go, people will see something in your life. Deuteronomy 28 verse 13, The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you today and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top and you will never be at the bottom. Do you know the difference between the head and the tail? The tail gets dragged around by the head and never gets to make decisions for themselves. That's where a lot of people are. Life just takes them wherever. They, no matter what they want to do, it never works out that way. Then you're the tail. You've got to get to be the head. The head makes decisions and goes somewhere. God wants you to be the head. To be the head means you have vision. It means you hear. It means you think. It means you steer. To be the tail is to follow along in the dust. Deuteronomy 28 verse 14 says, Do not turn aside from any of the commandments that I give you today to the right or to the left. And do not follow other gods and do not worship them. Here in my opinion is the greatest reason why many people are not blessed. It's called disobedience and rebellion. You know what? Most of us at least have a, a basic understanding of God's word. And even with that basic understanding of God's word, even though you don't know everything, you know there's a lot of areas in your life that right now are not good and not right. An attitude of so what is rebellion. Look at what he says. Do not turn aside from my commands that I give you today to the right or to the left. Don't have an attitude of, ah, it's not that bad. Ah, don't worry about it. Everything will be okay. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is God's blessing will disappear off your life. Choosing to say, you know, when God says go left, go left. When he says go right, go right. When he says go straight, go straight. When you do that, something comes from above. The blessing of God. And it begins to propel you forward. It's worth your while honoring God. Amen. You hear the Lord speak. You know what you need to do. But you rebel and you go and do something else. It's a reason before disaster. Such a person cannot be blessed. We are all rebellious in our carnal nature because we are all descendants of Adam. And you remember what Adam did. God said, don't do this, don't do that. Adam said, why not? Let's see what's the worst that can happen. We all tend to have that attitude now and then. Wherever we give in to our carnal nature and rebel against God, we immediately remove the blessing of God from our life. Romans 11 verse 28 states that the gift and the call of God are irrevocable. And that's true. In other words, nothing that we do is going to remove the call and the gift of God from our life. But yes, something that I want you to think about. Unless you are anointed, the gift and the call will never manifest in your life. You need the blessing of God upon your life to be the man or woman that God called you to be. I say to you today, I want to talk to you about the blessing. I have shown you the benefits of God's blessing upon your life. And I want to make you a promise. God's promise, not mine. It's available to all of you. Amen. 
And there's probably a lot of you that sat here today thinking, man, I, I don't experience that. I want it. You can have it. Look at your life and deal with where you know you're wrong. When you show God a humble heart, you know, two people walk into an office. Both of them get a hiding because they did things wrong. The one goes and humbles themselves and says, look, I'm sorry, I know I was wrong. The other one's like, who the hell do you think you are talking to me like that? Who's going to get somewhere? The humble one. Now, it doesn't change with God. When God speaks to us about our life and we're like, oh, you know what? That's actually true. You're, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I, I don't want to do that again. Help me. Inspire me with the Holy Spirit to do the right things. You're going to be blessed. You're going to go forward. You're going to make something of your life. I do believe firmly in my, with my heart that God wants to bless every single one of you sitting here. And the promises that I shared with you today will come into your life. Give God something to work with. Give Him obedience. And the next time you sit in church and you hear a sermon, don't just be like, oh, that was interesting. Go home and never do nothing about it. You know what you should do every Sunday when you hear a message? Let it sink in and during the week, apply what it says. Then you are where God wants you to be. Then your life is going to change. Then the blessing and the favor of God will be upon you. And then your hands will be prosperous in everything that they do. Did anybody learn something today? Give the Lord a big hand.